Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. This is the week of March 14th, 2022, and we got four stories for you this week. The first one is kind of a big one. DJI looks like they're ready to release a brand new drone on Monday. This would be the uh, the Matrice M30. We're going to talk about this. And then uh, the Inspire 3 is right around the corner, it looks like, as well. And then the Mini 3 as well. So there's been a lot of rumors and some confirmations this week. Uh, the next thing is the BV loss, the Beyond Visual Line of Sight Aviation Ruling Committee, came up with a report with a lot of recommendations for the FAA regarding flying beyond visual line of sight. Uh, we'll give you a quick overview, but we also have a lot more detail coming up on this because well, that's that's a huge story. Uh, we'll also talk about the EB TAC, which has been selected to become a blue SUAS 2.0, which is the first one to be added to the list. And then lastly, we'll talk about the uh, Oregon State Park. We talked about this last week, but I want to reiterate and ask you again for your action. So let's get to it. <laughs> So for our first story here, we have three new drones from DJI hitting the rumor mill. The first of which is the Matrice 30, at least that's what we expect it to be called. We also expect it to be released on March 21st. We actually already have some teaser images coming out from DJI Enterprise, almost showing a small little light beacon sitting on the top of the drone. We also already have photos leaked of this drone. There's four different angles that seem to be product photos of the rumored Matrice 30, and it seems to be a hybrid between a Mavic, like a Mavic 2 Enterprise, as well as a Matrice 300. So it's going to be interesting to see where this drone fits into their lineup. Now moving on from there, we also have a rumored Inspire 3. I think that this is the drone that needs the biggest update across their entire platform, as we haven't seen one, a new one in quite some time. Now it's rumored to be able to shoot 8K video at up to 75 frames per second, 4K video at up to 200 frames per second. It's expected to have a Super 35 CMOS sensor and shoot ProRes video in 4 444XQ or 10-bit 422HQ. That drone personally is probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most, just again because we haven't had an updated Inspire in quite some time, and mine is starting to become long in the tooth. Now the final of these three drones is one that we've heard a little bit about over the past couple of weeks, and that is the Mini 3. DJI kind of went outside of their release cycle with the Mini drone. We had this new Mini drone every single holiday season, but last holiday season they kind of came out with the Mini SE that was a rehash or like a combination of what the Mini 1 and Mini 2 offered, so we're now starting to see some rumors of a Mini 3. They might again go outside of this release cycle and release something out of the holiday season, maybe for like a springtime or summer launch. But the new leak that we have here for the Mini 3 is a kind of like a, a, a video of the shell of the inside of the Mini 3. It doesn't give us all that much information, but the one thing that it does confirm is that it is going to have a different gimbal design towards the front. Okay, and the next story this week is the Beyond Visual Line of Sight ARC, the Aviation Ruling Committee, uh, came up with a report. Now, it's not for the faint of heart. This report is uh, 250 pages long, plus another 200 and some pages just for the, the voting uh, portion of this. So. Um, the, the ARC is the Aviation Ruling Committee. It's a group of, well, quite a few people from the industry that get together. And, um, and the FAA asked them to come up with recommendations on how to move forward with Beyond Visual Line of Sight flying. And uh, they came up with this report, 250 pages. I've been reading through it for a little bit over, well, I don't know, it feels like a week, but it, it's a lot less than that, actually. Uh, and, and it's difficult to read because there's a lot. It's not like you're reading uh, just a book. Uh, you, you have to actually concentrate and make sure that you understand everything before moving forward. So. What we're going to do is we are going to have a full video separately uh, talking about this topic. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring people that were on the ARC to discuss um, why they recommended what they recommended, and then also uh, looking at the other point where people said they did not agree with the ARC. So that's coming around the corner. We want to take our time doing this because, well, first off, this is just a recommendation. It's going to be a while before anything happens. I want to make sure that people understand that this is not, not even final ruling, this is not even an NPRM, a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, this is just an ARC that is making recommendations to the FA. So there's no reason at this moment to get freaked out about anything that's in there or to get excited about anything that's in there either, quite frankly. Uh, but we'll do a full report 
And also we have a live Q&A coming up this Friday, March 18, at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we're going to have Kenji Sugihara uh, from the ARC. He was on the ARC, actually, for this. But he's also from the DSPA. And we'll also have Vic Moss from the DSPA. Uh, you, you're familiar with these two guys. They've been on the show before. Uh, extremely knowledgeable. And we're going to answer your questions. So if you have any questions about this, um, there, there's a recommendation in here for part 108. There's a recommendation in here about a type of equipment that needs to be on board if you want to fly beyond visual line of sight. So there's quite a bit of information. There's also a mention in there of shielded operation. So this is something that you really want to pay attention to. Uh, again, if you don't want to show up for the Q&A or watch our video and you just want to read the 500 page document, we'll put a link down in here for it. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> fair warning, it's heavy. I can only read about 20 to 25 pages a day uh, just because there is there's so much to digest. Okay, the next thing this week is the EB TAC has been added to the blue SUAS list. Uh, this is the first to be added to that new list, S, uh, the blue SUAS 2.0 list. The EB is made by Sensibly and it is owned by Ag Eagle. Uh, we're really interested to see how many others are going to be part of this blue SUAS 2.0 and how they'll be selected. And then we hope that this will add more competition to the current list, uh, which you know, we've been critical of, not just us, the industry has been very critical of in the past. And uh, so this is good. It's good to see some changes to that list and bringing different types of drone, different types of manufacturers as well. So hopefully this will help the, uh, the entire market. Okay, last thing this week is the Oregon State Park. We talked about it last week. We did a full report on this. Uh, Oregon is looking to change the rules to allow drones to be flown inside of the state parks, except for a few sensitive areas. And, and we're okay with this. Um, Last week, some of you made comments and said, well, you're just trying to get us to agree uh, to having restrictions. Well, drone restrictions are part of flying. Uh, we, we can't live in utopia where we believe that we should be flying everywhere. I don't believe that we should be flying everywhere. I also believe that we should be allowed to fly in the most amount of places with very few select restriction where there is uh, wildlife where there is uh, maybe a lot of people that want to have peace and quiet although lots of people and peace and quiet doesn't always go together but um so we're asking you to actually email the uh, Oregon State Park and tell them to keep the regulation as it is currently proposed they have a proposal there's a group out there that is trying to reverse this proposal and actually change it so that drones are not allowed anywhere except for a very few select areas. And this is not good. This is not a good compromise. So please, please, please tell the Oregon State Park, even if you don't live in Oregon, here's the email right here. Um, send them an email. Be nice, polite, concise, and just tell them that you believe that the current proposed rules uh, are actually a good compromise in the way to do it, and that doing anything otherwise is, uh, is, is just not going to work. And give them your reasons, okay? All right, and this is the last story for this week. We actually do have one last surprise for you. Uh, we are releasing our Mavic 3 deep dive this week, so please head over to the link down in here. Uh, this is a free course. Uh, all the prosumer and entry level uh, drones uh, deep dives that we do are free uh, and available to you. So if you want to learn how to fly the, the Mavic 3, how it works, all the different functionalities, all the different systems in there, uh, this is something that we offer. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you've invested a lot of money into your drone, so we want to make sure you know how to fly them. So. Uh, head over and uh, let us know what you like about it. We've uh, made some changes to the sets. We've made some changes to the editing. So I think this is a beautiful piece. And uh, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Hey, that's my line. <laughs>